Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you multi-channel recording using multiple tracks. This is a bit different from my other video, multi-channel recording using one track or one item, as it's more flexible and we can edit the individual tracks more easily. So in this video, we're going to record some multi-channel, multi-miked drums. I set up some tracks here. A kick track, a snare track, snare bottom, a few tom tracks, a pair of overheads, and a pair of rooms. And I set up the inputs for each one of the tracks based on the mic input. This one is mono, set to my kick. This is set to my snare. And we can set up the input naming in our preferences. If we go to audio, right down here, we can set up our input names. So I named it right here. Kick, snare, and so on. And for the overheads and rooms, because they're stereo tracks, I chose stereo as the input. Overheads and the room mics. So now we want to put each track into record. Let's select them all, hit the record arm button, they all go into record. And now to hear this, we have to choose a monitoring mode. So if we go right here and right click, we could choose to monitor the input or use tape auto style. It doesn't really matter which one we choose unless you're overdubbing. So for now, I'm going to choose monitor input. So we're going to hear the input through these tracks and while we're recording. So now we're ready to record. So now we recorded one pass of our drums. But let's say we want to record more takes and choose the best take for each section. This is pretty easy to do. If we go to our recording mode and go down here to new recording that overlaps existing items and make sure the default is chosen. Splits existing items and creates new takes. That's the option we want for creating new takes. So make sure that's chosen. And also for now, we're gonna leave on show all takes and lanes. We'll turn that off in a bit as it's more convenient, but for now, let's leave it on. So now let's record another take of the drums. So it recorded right on top, creating a new take, but only hearing the newest one. Let's do one more. So now we have three takes of our drums. And if we take it out of record, we're going to hear back just take three. Because that's the one that's highlighted. But we can switch takes on the fly. Now what we don't want to do is just start clicking. If I click different takes on the kick track, now we have take two for the kick, but take three for the others. We want to be careful about that. So with take three chosen on all the tracks, we're going to select them all. So I'm going to double click this track, hold shift, and double click the rest. I could have also just lasso the whole thing. And now we're going to group these items. So we'll go to the item menu and choose group right here. Group items. We can also hit the keystroke G. And that's going to item group all these items. So now to switch takes, we could use the keystroke T. If we go to item right here, go to takes, we can go to our next take by hitting T. So if we hit T, it goes back to take one. Hit it again, take two, and so on. But in this mode, we can still accidentally choose the wrong take. In other words, on the kick track, if I hit this, now I have take one on the kick, but take three on the rest. So to make it easier not to mess that up, go back to take three, 
turn off the option, show all takes and lanes. And now you can't do that. So now to switch takes, hit the T key, go back to take one, two, or three. Now this is really useful for comping. If you want to comp the takes to create one great performance. So we do this by splitting the items. Now before we do this, let's go to our preferences. If we go to media item defaults, we should turn on overlapping crossfade items when splitting. Otherwise, if we split them, we're going to create a fade out and a fade in. We don't want that. We want it to crossfade from item to item. So let's choose this. And now if we split based on sections, let's put one here, split it here, here, to create different sections. If we zoom in, you see we have a nice crossfade between each section, which we can move around by holding down shift and moving it. So now we can choose our best takes. Let's hit take one. Go to take two. Maybe this is take three. Back to take two. Back to take one and take two again. And now this could be our comp. Take one into take two, take three, back to take two, back to take one, and take two again. So let's hear that. So it's an easy way to comp multiple tracks at the same time. And if you want to hear different takes, just click on it, hit T, and we can hear take three for that section. Now, if you prefer to work in lanes, there is a workaround. Show all lanes. As I said earlier, you could accidentally choose a different take for one of the tracks. Now, our kick track for this piece is coming from take two, but the rest of the tracks are from take one. We certainly don't want that. So, what we could do is lock them. So, let's lasso them. Go to item and take and choose lock to active take. And if we choose that, just clicking on it doesn't change the take. So they all stay together, but we could still use the keystroke T. So if I hit this, hit T, it still switches, but they all switch together. So there's no chance of choosing the wrong take for one of our tracks. So that's a good feature to use if you want to see all your takes in lanes, like this. But if you prefer to work this way, you don't really have to do that. You can just choose them from here, hit T, and they switch. Now when you're done and you're happy with your comps, we can get rid of the other takes. Let's select them all. Go to take and choose crop to active take. And the unused takes are removed from the project. Or if you're really sure and you want to make this permanent, make sure you're happy with all your edits. And then we can glue it to be one item per track. What's the last of them? Go to the item menu and choose glue items. And that's going to create new files or one file per track of a keeper drum take. But you don't really have to do that. We could leave it as separate takes like this in case you want to recomp them later. Just choose them, hit T, and choose a different take for that section. And the benefit of this method is that we can edit the individual tracks separately from each other. Change the volume of our toms here, 
because the tom's not being hit. Or we could shift things around on our kick track. Let's turn off the grouping right here. And we could shift this. So we can move our kick separately from our snare. It just gives us the flexibility to edit each track separately. Or we could leave grouping on and move them together. So anyway, that's multi-channel recording using multiple tracks in Reaper. I hope you learned something. I hope you can use it. And I'll see you next time. Thanks.